Hi guys, welcome back to my studio. Stella here. Uh, sorry for my super uh, nasal voice today. I'm actually sick. It's just a cold, so don't worry about it. So, what do you do in between sickness? You get up and paint more. Well, <laughs> I don't know about others, but that's what I do. Uh, jokes aside, so I'm feeling a little bit better. So I just check my email. And then I receive a revision request from the client about these two dinosaurs um, with Pom Pom. So what happened is that if you haven't watched my How to Paint Your Dino Part 1 video, the link is down in the description box. I basically, you know, show you guys how I painted these two. Oh, actually, there are three. Pom Pom was a specific request. At the time, I was like, huh, okay, that's quite interesting. But we realized that these dinosaurs will actually be sold to juvenile boys very young in primary school and there are no boy cheerleaders in primary school. Unless you're Japanese, they have really awesome male cheerleading squad but that's totally a whole nother conversation we can have. So either way, now I have to do some field surgeries to fix this up. I'll start with the T-Rex and the same method will be applied to Triceratops and Pterodactyl. First thing you do is Google search T-Rex for uh, little digits, how many. It shouldn't be hard and this is actually the best picture that I can find. So this is exactly the reference image I'll be using. From here, use the same watercolor paper or uh, canvas if you're painting in oil painting to make sure that whatever color and water you add to the paper will match back to the dinosaur the same consistency i mean yes we are kind of grafting the arms back onto the original painting but you want to make sure that everything actually looks the same and so the prep work that you do now is going to make a huge difference you can use a tracing paper, but my brain is so out of it right now, I think I can wing it. So now I'm actually measuring how far, how wide the forearm is, and then I'm going to start repainting. You repeat the whole process with Triceratops, uh, take a look at how their little digits, you know, their actual feet looks like, and then you go from there. For field surgery type of painting, I try to save paper. So as you can see, I'm literally using the same tiny scrap of paper and just paint it right next to it. Again, repeat the process with Pterodactyl, take a look at the little digits, it's actually connected to the wingspan, and then you go from there. So I just did the little hands, talons for each of the dinosaur and I started with the T-Rex. So as you can see, I pretty much overdrew the forearm area just in case when I transplant it in Photoshop, I have enough material to work with. Um, I didn't even bother to kind of make this in this, uh, the same <coughs> distance as the original painting. Reason being that I was an idiot, I drew it too close to the paper edge, so I literally was running out of room, which is not an issue because I can fix it in Photoshop. I can just crop and reposition. Okay, the second one is the Triceratops. Again, <clears throat> I didn't really stick to the actual spatial orientation. This one is the right arm, forearm coming down, and then the the, um, the digits opening up. It's supposed to replace the pom pom. This arm is gonna go up here. Again, I can fix it in Photoshop. And in case you haven't noticed, uh, I'm using a tiny little paper. I'm basically going to paint all over it because I'm very cheap. I don't feel like using you know a huge you know piece of paper kill all the trees for literally little arms like this so yeah unless you want to bite me paper then that's a whole nother story <laughs> all right so again it's the same idea with a <coughs> tractactyl sorry i'm so nasal oh it's just a cold uh again i overdrew the wings a bit more so that i can easily blend it in photoshop and this is how it's gonna replace it this is how that's going to replace it. Um, yeah, 
So that being said, now let me color this very quickly, then we'll take it into Photoshop. I started this whole painting using the Japanese Chromatech watercolor pen. Um, link is down in the description if you would like to purchase them. I used the gray, number 24 gray, number 20, uh, 35 blue gray, and number 25 black. So bring up the original painting in Photoshop. The first thing we need to do is isolate the pom-poms and get rid of them. There's a new tool called the object selection tool that I love. What it does is that it actually maps out an object for you to select. Just give it a moment. The wheel of death, I think just finished. Yeah, there we go. So you select all of this, go and smooth out the edges. <clears throat> if you don't do the step, your selection will be jagged, and when you delete it, it will create that jagged edges that I absolutely cannot stand. So unlock the layer, select the pom-poms, and just do cut. So now we have to clean it up. I'm going to flatten the layer so that I can see the dirty parts against the white better. Um, you can use the magic wand tool to see if you can just pick out the parts you need to clean Obviously you can in my case because even the muscle tone is very close to that yellowish green part I'm supposed to delete So I tried it again didn't work and I'm thinking about using lasso tool, but then I thought better So now I'm going to use the object selection tool again. There we go. So I can isolate this what I'm doing is selecting the actual artwork, the dinosaur itself. Once it's selected, I'm going to do a <coughs> smooth again. You can keep it at three pixel five, doesn't matter. And I'm going to do an inverse. So then it's selecting the outside of the dinosaur. There we go. Now it cleaned everything out beautifully. Just to show you a backspace, just to show you what I did. So when you cut anything, it's always better to go back into the original painting and then smooth out any jagged edges or very unnatural angles. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm using eraser to do that. And unlike a lot of artists, I basically paint with the eraser tool sometimes. Anyway, that being said, now let us select the forms of the T-Rex and then let's do the transplant. Free lasso tool should be your best friend. What I'm doing now is I'm picking out all the parts that were not selected by Photoshop for whatever reason. So I'm just pressing down the shift key using free lasso tool to add them back into the selection. Um, if you're comfortable painting with a stylus pen, go for it. I'm pretty much um, using a mouse doing this because I'm used to it. Um, but for better accuracy, it's usually better to use a stylus pen to do this. It's an extremely tedious process, but you just gotta do it to make your transplant pretty and clean. Copy and paste the arms over, and already I made a mistake. I forgot I actually selected the pterodactyl's arm. 
not an issue at all. We can totally delete that using the lasso tool. From this point forward, I'm going to reposition the arms so that angle-wise, perspective-wise, they're all accurate. I'm also going to isolate the left arm from the right, which means I'm going to separate them into two separate layers. And that's what I'm doing now. Left arm is this whole thing. I'm going to select the right arm by cell, cut it, and then repaste it onto its own layer. This way, it will be a lot easier for me to edit each arm individually. So use adjustment and hue saturation. Let's match the forearms back to the body color because right now the forearms are a little bit too pink. So I am desaturating it as much as I can. Zoom it out and see if it's matching back to the body. And you repeat the whole process until you get it exactly the way you want it. There we go. Back to fixing the right arm. It looks a little bit off. I also don't like the angle. I'm going to let it tilt down just a bit more. So perspective-wise, it looks more seamless and natural. I'm changing the layer to multiply property so that it will blend seamlessly. It doesn't look like it's completely cut up and reattached. And from this point forward, again, eraser should be your best friend. Let's clean it up. From this point forward, it's literally using a combination of eraser, clone tool, and healing brush. Just clean out all the little blemishes, dirty spots that you see. Any edges that don't blend well, then use the combination of the tools I just mentioned to make them as seamless as possible, blending as naturally as possible. I'm literally cloning the edge of the forearm because it sort of kind of warped and disappeared a little bit. So you can do things like that as well. Now we're going to work on the right arm. The first thing we need to do is push the right arm towards the back. So I'm going to isolate the dino body and then move it on top of the right arm. So it looks like the right arm is coming from underneath the body, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to reposition it. Then I'm going to clean it up. First thing is that cat hair has got to go and that little bits from the cut also needs to be cleaned out as well. I highly, highly recommend always zooming 200 to 800% so that you catch everything. Zoom all the way in. I see all those white edges I don't like. So use this magic wand, select the white and delete them. Now I'm going to redraw the missing part of the right arm. So use the clone tool, that's what I'm doing, and just literally one tiny little inch, not even, but one centimeter at a time, clone it back. I'm isolating this body part that looks very out of place. I'm using very soft eraser brush to slowly erase and blend it out with the rest of the arm. Now I'm using clone to tool to very slowly reclone the texture around that chest area so it looks a little bit more natural and then slowly using the eraser tool. So I'm switching back and forth between clone and eraser tools to really create a very natural blend edges that fades into the arm. You just repeat the step over and over and over again 
until the arm looks seamless, as though you actually painted the arm together with the rest of the body at the same time. No sharp, straight edges. Blend it out. Zoom all the way out, and we are done. Now save this as however you will save it.、Um, I scanned this at 1200 DPI, so it can be printed ginormous. So yeah, now it has arms. Yay! Thank you guys so much for watching this video. They are done. If you like what I do, please subscribe and like, and I will see you at my next video.